He was my soulmate. He still is. Doreen's husband Andrew was diagnosed with Alzheimer's five years ago. She did her best to look after him at home, but when lockdown hit, his condition deteriorated fast. We actually became prisoners in our own house. We could go out in the garden, but then I had to be careful because he would have been out the back gate and off, as he was one day. And we found him in slippers, no jacket on, in the middle of the road. Worried for his safety, Doreen made the heartbreaking decision to move Andrew into a care home. To come back in to that chair we named it, the house quiet, clothes in the wardrobe never to be used again. I was absolutely saturated with guilt. But Andrew's settled now, and Doreen takes comfort in knowing he's getting the specialist care he needs. I know Andrew will not remember when I leave that I've even been there. But that's OK, I know. It's good to keep busy. Margaret was just 51 when she was diagnosed with a rare form of dementia. She sought medical help after noticing that she'd been more forgetful than usual. I would say it's more my memory that's affected than anything else. I'm thankful I still know everybody. I thought having a diagnosis of dementia, my life was over. That was partly because she had to leave her job in the NHS. But Margaret found a new purpose when she joined the Scottish Dementia Working Group. When I stopped work, I just thought I wasn't worth anything anymore. But that certainly gave me back I suppose self-worth, you know, see the person and not the disease. I don't know how much older I'll get, but every day's a bonus. But there is hope for the future with groundbreaking research right here in Scotland. From examining tiny blood vessels at the back of the eye to looking at minuscule parts of brain tissue to analyse how connections become tangled. These researchers have a common goal and a shared optimism. Even if we could delay the onset or the progression of Alzheimer's disease by five or 10 years, that's the difference between people meeting their grandchildren and people being able to have a really enjoyable retirement. And those things are so precious. I think what we'd all like to see is more healthy years of life, not just necessarily years of life. So the more we can do about it to try and understand it and you know, protect the brain from the ravages of time, then the better. What we are all trying to do here is come up with something that's truly life-changing, that will change the game, stop the brain from getting worse, or maybe even help it get a little bit better. But when is the million-dollar question? It's possible within my career, I would say. I'm very, very hopeful.